Hello everyone, how are you today? Welcome to the YouTube channel Plantastic. Today we are going to talk about the topic of acclimatization in plant tissue culture. Alright, acclimatization is the last stage of micropropagation. It is also known as hardening or transplantation process. It is an adaptation process in the greenhouse before the transference to ex vitro conditions. The root system must be induced in the stage 3 of micropropagation, which is known as the rooting stage. Ex vitro means the natural environment despite the acclimatization process in the greenhouse or growing room being highly manipulated or a very controlled environment. Acclimatization can be further split into pre acclimatization primary acclimatization or hardening in greenhouse, followed by secondary hardening. Why we need acclimatization in the first place? This is because the formation of the abnormal leaves at high humidity condition in plant tissue culture, lack of cuticle layer, low stomata content and fewer trichomes, high water content, aesthetic conditions that are free from microbes, thinner stem and root, underdeveloped palisade layers which are represented by thinner leaves, reduced vascular tissues, and also poorly developed and less chlorophyll. Moreover, a sudden change from high humidity Room temperature which is 25 degrees Celsius, high osmotic content in the media with aseptic condition, to the field with low humidity, high temperature and low water content in the soil mix that containing the microbes and microorganisms. This is very important because the condition in tissue culture room and the field are totally opposite at very extreme levels. What are the advantages and the durations of the acclimatization needed? Firstly, it helps to increase the survival rate of the plantlet for elite species. Secondly, it helps to reduce the cost of the loss due to the sudden change in the environment. The duration needs about 4 to 6 weeks, each stage for 1 to 2 weeks. Here is the general flow of acclimatization, whereby we take out the rooted plantlets from in vitro condition, we remove the agar carefully, we plant it at a soil with pre acclimatization, followed by acclimatization prior to field planting. How do we carry out successful acclimatization? For the basic level, you take out the plant carefully with a forceps. You gently wash away the agar residue with tap water. Be careful not to damage the root or at a minimal damage. Place the plant carefully in the pot containing the soy mix until all the roots are covered. For advanced level, you may remove the sealer, loosen the leaves a little bit, but do not open it for 2 to 3 days to balance out the humidity between the room and the container itself. Use the spatula to disturb the agar into pieces while not damaging the roots. This is a little bit technical step here and then take out the plant carefully. Gently wash away the agar residue with tap water with fingers. In my case, usually I will use two fingers to rub the agar off. Place the plant carefully in the pot containing the soy mix until all roots are covered. Moist the soil and keep it in the bigger container with a cup of water at shaded and well ventilated area, preferably controlled environment. What are the soil media is suggested for acclimatization? The potting mix at different ratio, peat, vermiculite, perlite, polystyrene beads, cocoa compost. If you came across a lot of articles doing on acclimatization, the ratio of the substrates are different from plants to plants and according to the scientists themselves. So what I can suggest is, you can buy succulent potting mix because succulent soil is very well drained for the plant 
therefore the root inside the soil can breathe easily. Furthermore, you may see some researcher they water the acclimatized plant with one fourth strength of the media solution. They cover each plantless with perforated plastic bag with small holes for air circulation and put it at a shade or low light for about 15 to 20 days. The process of removal of polybags for a few hours every day in the beginning and then slowly increase the time of exposure until the plants are able to withstand complete removal of the cover. For commercialization in plant tissue culture, the plants are planted in portrait with 96 holes. High humidity is maintained by fogging or misting at 20 micrometer. The room usually equipped with fan or pet system and then gradually change to the few conditions every 4 weeks which means that you slowly increase the temperature while reducing the humidity every 4 weeks. Alternatively, in very pro acclimatization, you can see some researchers that add the desiccants in culture vials. The use of microporous closure to allow gases exchange. You have to take note here, there are some cellular like paraffin but have microporous properties. There are also the lids with some ultra filter to allow the gases exchange to be occur. You may cool the bottom of the culture vessels, which is known as the cool treatment and chilling. If the plantlers are without the roots, the plantlers are deep inside the root promoting hormone that available, the available in the nursery. Some plants can eventually grow without the roots and the roots will be induced in the later stage. Alternatively, in the research-based acclimatization, some people prefer to use stiffer agar which means that higher concentration of the agar to reduce the osmotic content. But this will eventually make it more difficult to separate the roots from agar. Or you can eventually incubate the plantlets at lower strength of the media before acclimatization, which is from full strength to half strength to one fourth strength. You may apply other types of micropropagation, which helps to reduce the humidity. All right. So, in acclimatization, what are the physiological changes that occur on the plants? First, lignification in primary root tissues. The leaves will become thicker due to the enlargement of polycyte cells. There will be the formation of cuticle layer which is known as the waxy coat to reduce the water loss by increasing the refraction of light which is the sunlight to reduce the heat received by the leaves. There will be higher stomata density to control the transpirations and water loss. Things to take note in if you found some contaminated plantlets, you may proceed with acclimatization. But remember to do the decontamination process after that. For this, I suggest you to wear a mask to prevent you to breathe in the spores of the fungus and the gloves to protect you from the bacterial infection. Because some people might be allergic to the bacteria inside the media. If you want to cover the plants, you have to take note here because Covering the plants will cause contamination depending on the purity of the container or the room and also the cleanliness of the soil mix because you trap everything inside the container or the plastic bag. You must make sure that always have the temperature control in the transparent roof of the greenhouse, especially those countries that have very hot sun during the afternoon. In indoor conditions, you might have less worry about the temperature control. And the timing to start at the market size is very important because different species grow differently. Most of the perennial species will take about 6 to 12 weeks before you can market it out. Alright, before we end our video, I will give you another bonus based on my experience. It is better to avoid sterilize the soil by using autoclave. Why? This is because after autoclave the soil, yes, it is very clean of microbes. However, you might also kill the good fungus inside the soil. So the problems I encounter with the sterilized soil is there will be higher fungal growth observed during the acclimatization process by using the sterilized soil. For me, I usually open a bag of soil and let it expose to the air until it's totally dry. 
Why? This is to kill the microorganisms inside the soil when there is no water for them to survive. I do hope you learned something from here. Don't forget to subscribe, share and hit up the notification button for subsequent videos on plant science. You may also find me at the LinkedIn profile for the connection. This is not a sponsored video and I would like to share with every one of you the reference I used in this video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.